Last year, I uploaded a video on my top 15 roller coasters of all time, which was very successful. But a lot has happened since October 1st, 2022. So it's time to show you what has been updated, but this isn't a new top 15 video because only two roller coasters have made it into the top 15 and I changed some rankings a bit. So uh, it would be kind of redundant to have to do another their top 15 video, so instead, I'm going to rank all of the 38 credits that I got in the last year. I almost said 2023. Wild fuck 2023. In the past 365 days, as of when this video will be uploaded. 38 of them. Let's get started. Number 38 is Mind Eraser at Six Flags Daring Lake. Thanks, I hate it. Number 37, Tidal Wave at Trimper Rides in Ocean City. Worst boomerang I've ever been on. Number 36, Tumbleweed Adventure Park USA. Yeah, not much to say about it. It's kind of like a little phantom style kitty coaster. It's fine for what it is. I, I guess it's not much to say about it. Number 35, Wacky Worm at Jolly Roger Amusement Park in Ocean City. This is actually my first Wacky Worm, believe it or not. I've never read one of those and it's kind of interesting. You also go around circuit twice, and the drop on it is right after the turn. So if you're in the back, it's kind of like a kitty El Toro. So uh, that's something. Number 34 is Wacky Worm at Sharp Town Fireman's Carnival. Since the Jolly Roger one went around twice, this one goes around three times. So yeah, by technicality, it goes a little bit higher. Number 33, Little Phantom at Kennywood. There was a coaster YouTuber that I watched once before where this is kind of like a meme and it's quite fun. Good airtime for a kitty coaster. Number 32, Woodstock Express at Dorney Park. This is just a standard Sampere family gravity coaster, so I rank it appropriately. But, of course, I will never forget our three funny experiences on it with being stopped on the lift hill during the third lap and then probably the system was reset, so we ran around three more times after that for a total of five, which is two more than it was supposed to, and then a very funny on-ride photo, and then our special nickname for the ride, which, if you want to hear what it is, go to my Dorney Park video. Number 31, Cosmos Curves at Knobles. Best kitty coaster of the year. Number 30, Spinning Coaster at Tripper Rides in Ocean City. The lift hill of this was kind of rough, it felt like it had square wheels, but that's like the least important part of it. Uh, the drop down was actually quite okay. Number 29, Bat at Canada's Wonderland. This is just a standard boomerang. That, that, that's kind of it, nothing impressive about it. Number 28, Wildcat at Jolly Roger in Ocean City. My 125th roller coaster. It used to be at Cedar Point, and I like this more than the Adventure Park USA one. It, it has an airtime hill, and what's quite interesting is that there's like a tire boosted lift in the curve between the station and the main lift till and it has a couple of decent forces number 27 black diamond at Knobles. this is an indoor wooden coaster pretty cool being in the dark and uh those sun drops aren't too fast but they're fun and there's a good amount of scenery here and there number 26 wild mouse at dorney park it's okay stand wild mouse you know exactly what you're going to get going on this I don't really have to explain it to you. Number 25, Boomerang at Six Flags Daring Lake. This is an improvement over Bat. Instead of aerodynamics trains, it has the Vacoma trains with Vestas trains, and that made it a lot more fun. Number 24, Moto Coaster at Six Flags Daring Lake. This is a very interesting launch coaster. I recommend you sit in the back because in the front, you go through that first bend after the launch at a fast speed, and it's kind of uncomfortable. But other than that, it, it's fun. I recommend it as a good first launch coaster. Number 23, Barracuda at Jolly Roger in Ocean City. It's quite fun. It's a Zier Flitzer and you're in this toboggan-like car with no restraint, so don't be an idiot. It's a don't be an idiot coaster. And you go around these bends. It's quite fun. There's also one curve where you're going like really slowly. That That's interesting. Number 22, Exterminator at Kennywood. This is a regular Revershawn spinning wild mouse, but in the complete dark. You have no idea what's going and my only hint as to where we are was my memorization of Raging Cajun at Six Flags America. Quite fun. Number 21, Thunderbolt at Kennywood. Very good classic wooden coaster. I love the giant dips into the ravine where you're above Venom's Revenge. He had a really bad rough patch two drops after 
the lift hill, but other than that, it was a very good ride. Number 20, Skyliner at Lakemont Park. Also a pretty good wind coaster. The jobs are quite good, but the valleys in between two hills are kind of rough. But the first turnaround uh, has like a dip in the middle instead of just turning around without doing anything. That's good. Number 19, Predator at Six Flags Dune Lake. With the G-Side time track, this is a much better ride. This kind of reminds me of Grizzly at King's Dominion before it got really bad. A couple of decent drops and a little bit of airtime. I like this ride. Number 18, Thunderhawk at Dorney Park. One of the oldest coasters still operating and it's pretty good. Some of the other wooden coasters that I mentioned have some rough patches, but I don't remember Thunderhawk having any bad moments. It, it was pretty good. It's a standard wooden coaster. Number 17, Twister at Knobles. With two lift hills, technically, this is quite an interesting ride. There's a lot going on. It looked like there was some retracking in that big bowl section underneath the station, and that uh, worked quite well. Uh, it's quite an intense wind coaster. Number 16, Viper at Six Flags Daring Lake. This is my favorite Aero Custom Looper so far. Every version felt forceful, especially the vertical loop. It, it really puts positive Gs on your body, and it's also a very pretty ride. Number 50, Water Mountain's Guardian at Cairns Wernland. This is a roller coaster because at first it uses gravity, but appeal is more of a game ride. I've never been on a game roller coaster before, so cool, I hope there are more of these. The dip just after Elliptal is quite smooth, but then you go into these rooms with screens and then you shoot enemies. Well, my favorite part of this ride has a bit of a spoiler warning, so go to whatever timestamp is on screen if you want to skip it. My favorite part of this ride is the drop track. I unfortunately knew it was there going on, but I didn't know where in the ride it was, so the whole time I was nervous that it was about to happen once we got to the end of the track. I, I was like, okay, here it comes. I know it's there. You can't fool me. And then we dropped, and it was more powerful than I was expecting. I think I literally screamed out loud for the first time. It, uh, it, it was such a fun part of it. Number 14, Jackrabbit at Kennywood. For being as old as it is, this is one of the smoothest wooden coasters I've ever ridden. Holy moly. It's quite a simple layout on paper. You just go two times around in oval with the lift hill in the middle. But that double down? Number 13, Impulse at Knobles. One of the best rides at Knobles. Of course, I'm a sucker for a vertical chain lift, and there's no vest restraint or over shoulder strain. There's just a lap bar. There's a bit of a rattle on this coaster though, which I didn't like, but it didn't bother me too much. It was just a fun ride where you go through inversions. Number 12, Skyrocket at Kennywood. Very good launch coaster. My favorite parts are the top hat in any row. Like you go over the top very, very slowly, and it's kind of dramatic because at any point you're going to be tucked down it. The zero G rolls are quite good, as well as the drop after the mid-course break run. Now, that was quite something. The last half of it is kind of forces, but the first half is still quite good. And of course, if you're a watcher of my channel, you know that this is a big meme coaster. It was worth having the coaster closed just for that clip. Number 11, Ride of Steel at Six Flags Darien Lake. My thoughts on Superman Ride of Steel and this one are about the same in terms of layouts, but one big improvement that Ride of Steel has is that the straight track actually makes sense. Actually wait, that was the original, whereas Superman Ride of Steel was just a clone, so actually it was a dis-improvement. Uh, but I wrote Superman Ride of Steel first, so Ride of Steel for me came second, uh, you know what I mean. Number 10, Talon at Dorney Park. This is a good B&M invert. Nothing about really stands out amongst other B&M inverts, but basically any of them are quite good rides. I rode this first in my day at Dorney Park, so it was a pretty good warm-up. It was a very quiet B&M looper too, as you can see from my off-ride. Quite smooth too and fast paced. Number 9, Steel Curtain at Kennywood. Steel Curtain has the most inversions of any coaster in North America, which is quite interesting. My favorite ride was in the front 
and my favorite parts about it were the Drakken Fire Drop, as well as the Airtime Hill, and the Zero G Stall below the Airtime Hill. Quite a good coaster. Number 8, Possessed at Dorney Park. You go like so high up so fast and up uh, the spikes five times. Oh, oh. And especially when you're in the back and you go up the back spike. Oh, oh. You're just lifted in the air and then the drop down is quite fun. It's like one of those pirate ship rides on crack. Kind of a one trick pony or two trick pony, but amazing tricks nonetheless. Number 7, Hydra the Revenge at Dorney Park. This is one of my favorite B&M floorless coasters. My favorite part is probably the Heartline roll as soon as you leave the station because you're going upside down so slowly. It's so much fun. It's also one of the few floorless coasters with a straight down drop after a lift instead of a pre-drop. The verses are quite smooth too. There's one bit of headbanging, but uh, that's okay. Number six, Leap the Dips at Dorney Park. Why aren't enthusiasts talking about this ride so much? It's usually brought up to talk about how old it is, but I know very few people who actually rode it. Wow, first of all, you get in and there's no restraint. There's just a bar ahead of you that you can hold on to, but that's optional. And when you go down hills and over airtime hills, that creates a kind of airtime that you can only get on Leap the Dips. I've never experienced that kind of airtime before. Like, I remember one part around the middle where my whole body was just flying independently for a second. It was kind of scary, but also really good. Even the turns are quite interesting because you kind of go up and down like a horse. It really makes the wait for airtime very worth it. Uh, like, every single inch of this ride is interesting. Number five, Tantrum at Darien Lake. This is kind of a short ride, but that's fine. Again, vertical chain lift, very cool. And then the Beyond Vertical Drop Hall, always a treat. Many versions. This fixes the problem of impulse by not having a rattle in it. And yeah, you just twist and turn for, for like three elements. But they're, they're good elements. I rank this above Ride of Steel because I decided I'd rather ride Tantrum three times than Ride of Steel once. It just has more packed into it pair foot of ride, so that's why it's ranked here. Number four, Steel Force at Dorney Park. This is one of the most underrated roller coasters I've ever ridden. Everyone else seems to think it was kind of Steel Force-less, but I say no, it's Steel Force for reason. Derek and I rode in the Magnum Magic Seat on one of our rides, unintentionally actually, which is the first car, third row, and actually, Better than Magnum? In my opinion, like, especially after the mid-course break run, there's a lot of airtime, but there's not just airtime. About halfway between the first drop and the mid-course, there's a twister section, and uh, you can actually gray out quite easily on that. You can also see the footers for the former coaster Hercules from this ride, as well as from high just lift hill. Very fast, very fun ride. I like it. Number three is Phoenix at Knobles. This is my favorite coaster from our May weekend park trip. It doesn't look very tall when you're walking over there, but it's not the height that matters, but what you do with it. There's no lap bar that goes directly down to your legs. No, there's just a single position buzz bar, like on Comet at Waltermere Park. And wow, that, that creates lots of airtime around every hill. My favorite part is the last straightaway section where you're going underneath the lift hill. Uh, that airtime is so strange. Like at one point, I was still experiencing airtime from one hill when the next hill begun. That, that was quite something. Very wild ride. If you can only ride one ride at Knobles, make it Phoenix. Number two is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. Dang, this ride is awesome. Even the first drop alone is quite good. Very smooth. Morgan did a lot of good for Steel Phantom. But the 240 foot drop down the hill underneath Thunderbolt and towards the river is just iconic. I, I can't recommend it more. But there are also some airtime hills in many places which are extremely wild. And the restraint is kind of like an upgrade buzz bar that comes from the side. It's quite interesting. I can't remember if those people or not, but I don't think so. So yeah, every time there's an airtime hill, you just go way up into that restraint. I wish there was a little bit of 
padding on the seat because after you experience that airtime, you slam down in, into the plastic seat, so it's a bit uncomfortable, but like, it's worth it. This ride is quite something. And before we get to the number one coaster credit that I got in the last year, let's have a moment of screaming for all the coasters that I made plans to ride in the past year, but for one reason or another, didn't get to. Ah! Motherfucker! And the number one new roller coaster that I wrote in the past year is... Butterfly at Wuken Park in- Alright, if you've seen my videos and use process of elimination, you could probably guess that Wildcat's Revenge. Or is it? Yes, it is. While the GCI Wildcat was still quite good, this! Is amazing right first of all the pre-lift section is already good enough like you go down and uh, there are all these bank turns and then you go very slowly up the lift tilt the reason is that the chain lift launch system is buying you time because the next block zone isn't clear yet and you kind of wonder oh no are we going to stop and get evac oh no but then once that's clear you start speeding up you go down that drop super fast it's very fun and the inversions are absolutely Amazing, especially the zoo G stall. Your body is like trying to fall down from the train, and many good air time moments. And that bit of laterals that you can see from the queue line is very excellently done. Very comfortable ride, very intense, very fun. All right, that's it for ranking the coasters that I got the credit for in the last year. Thanks for watching, uh, and have a good day. Ride on.